Hello and welcome back to Chaos Bane. Last time we managed to track down where the cult has been getting into Nuln and Howl, which is through a cave that is connected to the sewers. And now we gotta talk to Tackless and Voss, and then probably go after the leader of the cultists, the guy who became a champion of Nurgle. The time to strike is now. Witch Hunter Voss has assembled his men here at the tower. They will move in as soon as you have breached the camp's defenses and defeated Kessler. The Beastmen will have fortified their camp using whatever materials are at hand. They will be present in great numbers and hungry for human flesh. The key to victory is Kessler. Defeat him, and the others will break just as they did at Kislev. Alright, let's see if the loot is back here in these spots. Nope. And probably not. There's always a chance. Nope. Even the barrels are gone. Can't have anything in Detroit. Oh yeah, I can throw that. Send out my Pokeball. Those cultist guys are kind of annoyingly armored. Especially when they show up in just raw numbers. It's like, dude, stop. Go do your Healy crap elsewhere. Actually, let me check a second. Okay, I'm on normal difficulty. As I say, did I bump it up a notch? Because I feel like I kind of needed it normal. I remember before I was contemplating bumping the difficulty up. Because I was like, ah, these guys are easy. Eh, I'm kind of glad I didn't. I've only got rare gear. I haven't found any heroic. That's actually something I'd like more games to do, is introduce more loot tiers. Like, Borderlands has always done a good job of that. Granted, as games... as those games have aged, each one kind of got really convoluted. Like, I remember when Pearlescent in Borderlands 1 was, the, like, the top. And then Borderlands 2, like, oh yeah, we got Seraph, and... If you have the raid on Digistruct Peak, then you have glitch weapons, and if you have the Tiny Tina DLC, then you have the, uh, what is it? The gemstone weapons, which are, like, legendaries, but they're a separate kind of tier, because they function a little differently, and they're more rare than a standard legendary. Then there's... If you had the last DLC that was free for a little while, you could get, like, oh, Opalescent or something, where it was Radiant or whatever, where it was another tier. And it's like, that's fine, but when you introduce those tiers, I feel like you need to kind of have a baseline already existing for those, otherwise... You're just being like, hey, this expansion we threw in a side grade that's more rare than the standard, but doesn't get enough of a bonus to really be worth it. Those are the moments where I'm kind of like, why?
Like, item rarities... Item rarities are a very kind of touch-and-go thing. Because you either have too many and the game feels bloated, or you have too few and the looting experience doesn't feel worthwhile. And being able to craft stuff is always appreciated. I mean, that's one thing I like about Diablo and Martyr, is I can just sit down, farm out a bunch of mats, or get mats from breaking down weapons I've been collecting this whole time, and then use them for something. Tactical retreat. What is that? Is that like a retreating shot? Oh. Just dodge roll buffs. Okay. Not really what I'm totally interested in here. Novel idea, but... It's definitely not something I'm like, ooh, I need this. I like that nerglings can form together. Like some kind of smelly version of Voltron. The Megazord of Stink. Since I'm here, I might as well just beat these guys quick. I do wish games like this would add some characters that don't make sense. Like, give me a Vampire Coast Captain or something. Yeah, from a lore perspective, it's like, why would he be working with Techless and the humans? But it's like, I don't need all the characters to be fitting for the lore, I just want some neat characters. You know, give me a Lizard Man, give me... Give me a slan. I'll play a slan mage. I think it'd be fun. I'm all for characters that are fun most of the time. Like, not even most of the time. I'm always for characters that are fun. As long as they fit the setting. Like, if you. We're like, hey, we're going to give you a space marine. I would stop and say, no, that's dumb. But you can do a bunch of stuff with this within the universe and still make fun and interesting characters. Like, I've always wanted a game where you can play as some form of chaos cultist or a Chaos Champion. I think it'd be fun. You don't really get to see that. And while their abilities would most likely just be themed versions of another character, it still would be interesting and fun to mess with.
Ah, I thought I'd dodge that. I feel like my knife trick is starting to lose its effectiveness. Which isn't good, because I don't really have anything else to run with. This character doesn't really have... They have damage over time, but they don't have lingering... just damage in general like this. I mean, come on. The AoE of just dropping that is immense. Ah, I keep wanting to do a, like, map zoom. I keep forgetting this game, for reasons I don't comprehend, just has getting rid of the, like, objective and then getting rid of the map entirely. I don't know who in their right mind just would remove their map entirely and fumble about, but I guess the devs saw it necessary to include. I really want to see what these heroic weapons are, because they better have some good effects or I'm going to be pretty frustrated. Because I really need... Like, rares... Even rares, I feel, don't cut it for this character. I don't know why, both my playthroughs, I pick the characters whose DPS seems to be the worst. Like, this and Martyr, I pick characters that you have to find, like, their one niche trick. And then you just one-trick a character. Because I bet if I fire up any other character, I get way more diversity in their movesets. And I bet summoning is the way to go, it's just, like I've said before, I hate how loud the characters, like, callouts are. You know, you summon a dryad and it's just like booming over the rest of the game to be like, hey, you summoned a dryad, I want you to know. It's like, yes, game, I clearly know. Even if I didn't, I don't care. Like, I don't care if my abilities are proccing. If they are, I'll see it. And maybe it's just me. I... I'm overly particular when it comes to games, and I'll admit that. But it's just things like that where they have to, like, just scream it at you. It feels... It partly feels, like, almost insulting to your intelligence to be like, Hey, idiot, you need to know this, and we're just going to beat you over the head with it. But it's also just annoying with, like, hey, we're gonna play the same sound effect at like 20 decibels over everything. Diablo doesn't do that. I mean, I, I assume the devs looked at Diablo and were like, yeah, we wanna make that. So it's like, why would you make certain design choices that just are bad? And it might be something of like, oh, well, we didn't think of that it was that bad, but... That's what QA and, honestly, public betas should be for. Which, as a note, I really think every game should have to do a public beta just because 
one, people, they don't do demo discs anymore for games. They don't do, you know, I remember GameStop would have, like, a disc you could pick up that had a bunch of demos on it. Or even before that, you had, like, old Apogee software games back for DOS. And it was shareware, you know? Hey, you want to play Duke Nukem 1? Well, here's, like, the first of nine chapters. You can play it to completion, and then the game ends and it's like, Hey, you want to continue? You can order through mail or fax, you know, a check to us, and we'll send you a game. But, you know, you could test it. You could play the game, say, Hey, I like this. Hey, I don't. And it also kind of let people experience the thing. Now it's like, hey, do you want to play this game? Or do you want to buy this game? We're not really going to tell you much or show you much. We'll give you some in-engine footage. And you're going to have to assume our game, based on good faith, doesn't suck. And I, given how every game or how studios have been, there isn't a studio I can flat out say I can 100% take at face value. You know, Bethesda was one of the last ones. Yeah, they had glitchy games, but they were pretty good. But Fallout 76 showed that they're willing to put out a subpar product and hope for the best. And I don't know about any... I don't know about any other company or any other industry that's cool with putting out a product that's subpar, knowing it's subpar, and hoping for the best. I mean, I think Boeing did a little bit with some of their airplanes, but otherwise, like, you're not gonna have, at least you'd hope, an auto company be like, hey, you know how, like, anti-lock brakes are an electronic component? Uh, sometimes they just don't work, and it's not like a one in, you know, 100,000 one in a million. It's like a one in 25. We're just gonna, you know, hope things don't just go bad and you crash and die. Good luck, thanks for your money. Like, no company would go at those kind of odds, but it feels like the games industry, they're just like, yeah, we made a game. QA? What's that? Isn't that what your customers are for? I mean, hell, Anthem. I really wanted Anthem to succeed. I still do. But I'm also like, you guys screwed up so hard you're trying to sell your fix as like an expansion pack. Cut your losses. <laughs> Make a new one, learn from your mistakes, try again. I mean, I... Once again, if I was given a defective product and was told by the company, oh, hey, yeah, we'll, we'll fix it for you, but pay us, I'd just be like, nah. Nah, I'm, I'm not playing this game. You can... You can blow it out your ass. I'm not paying for you to rectify your mistakes that should have been rectified in the beginning. Man, I wish these things were in Total War Warhammer. They're so weird.
More cultists! Yeah, that's one thing I notice is... Like, the cultists do not have a lot... Like, Nurgle cultists do not have a lot of variety to them. Give me some Nurgly... Uh... Beastmen. Give me... Nurglefied... Knights. They're going to have some actual guys in armor instead of just a bunch of dudes in hobo rags trying to chase you down and get their stink on you. Just seems weird that it's like, hey, you want to fight a guy with, like, no clothes on? A guy with robes on? Some small stinky boys? Or some big demon guys? It's like... You sure? Sure you don't have anything else in there? You know, some... Knights, or... Some guys who are partially corrupted by Nurgle. You know, they're not all the way there just yet, but they're... They're getting there. I feel like that's kind of where the direction some of these guys would go. Like, I don't think you'd have all these just dudes with totems. I think you'd have some normal, like, cultists with those, or... It's Nurgle. You can have chaos sorcerers. Nurgle's cool with them. It's just Korn who hates them. Especially, too, with the fact that fantasy has way more demons that I remember than uh, 40k. Lord of Plagues, hear me! Long have I worshipped you. Great are the deeds I have done in your name. I have performed your darkest rites. I have sacrificed the flesh of innocence in your name. Guy's got a bit of a raspy voice, you know, a little bit of a primatine might just help clear that up there. You waste your lost breath, human. It's over. There is nowhere left to run. Over, you blind fool. Chaos is eternal, and I am its champion. Osavar Cool thought the same thing. But I was at Kislev, and I watched him die. Another will rise to take Kuhl's place! The Harbinger has sought out the shattered pieces of his army, and found a new champion to seek the favor of the Chaos Gods, and assume mastery of the Horde! The Harbinger? Is that what the sorceress calls herself? Tell me where she is, human. Tell me, and perhaps it might save your life. <laughs> Look at you, grasping at shadows. The Harbinger is far beyond your reach. <laughs> And as for my life, it belongs to Nurgle, Lord of Pestilence and Decay. I give it to him freely in return for vengeance. You have been deceived. <laughs> Oh, 
finally a great unclean one. Let's just get all the damage I can put on him. I say he's going down pretty quick. Trying to focus on killing the boss. He's going down pretty easy. Which I am pleasantly surprised by. Also, being able to roll dodge in and out of fights is just too good. I'll just tank it. 
Yeah, I was able to tank that without any problem. for that one since I'm I don't have my healing area up yet. That was easy. I sensed the greater demon force its way into our world and feared the worst. You have done well, young... It nearly was, High Law Master. Blessed Isha. It nearly was. The Eye of Argoth. Where is it? Over there. Atop Kessler's remains. Beware the thing, Witch Hunter. It has a way of sticking its claws into your mind. Leave it to me. I'll make sure it doesn't tempt anyone else. What about the sorceress? She calls herself the Harbinger. According to Kessler, she's tracked down the remnants of Azabar Kul's army and is searching for a champion to lead it. Where is she, this Harbinger of Chaos? I don't know, High Law Master. Kessler refused to say. Prague. What's that? My agents in the north tell me that a large part of Kul's army fled the Battle of Kislev and returned to the ruins of Prague. I'd assume they would take ship and return to the Chaos Wastes, but now that I've heard about this, Harbinger. I'm not sure. Perhaps we might learn more there. Perhaps so. It will be dangerous, but at the moment I see no other choice. But it's impossible. Prague is hundreds of leagues from here. We would never reach it in time. Not so. There is a waystone near Prague that we can use. I can link to it from the stone here in Nuln and send you through. Meet me at the tower when you are ready to proceed. In the meantime, I will begin the rituals to open a pathway to Prague. All right, so that is all for now. If you enjoyed this episode, please make sure to hit the like button. It helps out the channel a lot. If you are new, please make sure to hit the subscribe button. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.